welcome to me. I'm Simon Moore, and I'm uh, here to talk to you about what happens with UCAS from now on. So as a year 13 parent, very, very exciting time. Let me let you know what's happened so far. We've um, started this process off in May, where students completed pretty much all of the UCAS form, and there's a lot of fiddly little bits there, so we did it all together. That's all done and dusted. So now all they need to do is choose the five courses and complete a personal statement. Now quite a lot of them have worked their way through that over the summer. They've had a good look at universities and the courses and also considered the personal statement. So they've got the support of tutors, myself, Mrs Westwood at school, there's an Oxbridge group and a medical group which is supported as well. And at this stage, very early October, I must say that this year group is way ahead of previous years. So. Just to go through very briefly about choosing courses again, because nothing's settled, we're, we're way ahead from a lot of deadlines. Choosing courses basically does depend on uh, predicted grades, those things which um, were drawn up in May. Many have been amended since then, always upwards, I'm pleased to say. And so a student will have a rough idea, well, a very good idea of where they can apply. So. Two places to look at are UCAS.com, which is an excellent site. There's bags and bags and bags of information, but my particular favourite is Unifrog. And Unifrog I keep uh, pushing and pushing. There's a good place to put in predicted grades, and then the student can say which subject they're interested in, and then refine it. They can say, well, I just want to be in London, or I definitely don't want to be in London, campus university, or uh, city university. They can be very, very sort of discerning in their choices to filter it down. And one of the best things about it is when you put a subject in, it springs up dozens and dozens of different alternatives. So instead of, you can write simply business in. And then there'll be obvious courses such as business management, business and finance, but then all sorts of things that they may never have dreamt about. And you can go and explore those. So with Unifrog as well, with the three predicted grades, there's this um, system where it'll come out with three columns. The one on the left is an aspirational choice, which is a bit higher than uh, predicted grades or at the very, very top end of those predicted grades. The middle band is a safe choice. That's what the student would expect to be able to get. And then, sorry, a solid choice. And then the band on the right is the safe choice, which is an insurance one. Now, I'd recommend... For most students, they go for one aspirational, one solid, and uh, three solid, and one safe. So that's a one, three, one combination. Now, the other great thing with this uh, piece of software, which your students have all got, which your sons and daughters have all got on their laptops, is that by choosing a course such as this one, you can follow it through, and there is just a mountain of information about it. But one of the most important things to look at is the getting in section. This is also in, on the UCAS site as well. And what this will have is basically it's a bit of small print, and it might say, you might find that it says you've got to have maths GCSE at a seven, or you've got to have maths A level, or this is an actual required subject, not a preferred subject, meaning if you don't do that particular A level, you they won't consider application. So the getting in section's very, very good. It also details open days and all those sorts of things. Though we're getting a bit late in the day for that, it's still worth having a look because it's three years of their lives and they need to get it right. So here's how the dates for the 24-25 uh, entry go. The Oxbridge and medical candidates have to have theirs in, in less than a fortnight now. But everyone else, Technically, it says the 29th of January. And I know I've discussed this before, but that's way too late. I, I know very, very, have very, very good uh, foundation to know that a lot of departments will just look at the first 100 good applications that come through and offer them. And if they're, if they're offering 100 places, and when they've done those 100, the rest will get rejected. It's not every department that'll do that. And I, I don't know, it might be the majority, but if, I know it's some. And it's not worth taking the risk that you're applying for a course where it's some of them. So really, the sooner the better. We don't want it to turn into a race or a rush. But once your, once your son or daughter has made their decisions, then it really is best to get the application off 
sooner rather than later. And what we're aiming at here at LVS is to get them posted off within a week of half term or the week after half term. So that's sort of late October, early November. And that'll give, give I think, our students at LVS an advantage over very, very many schools who are a lot slower at putting these things through. Now, what happens next is the UCAS is complete, the five choices are there, the personal statement's written, and then all that's left to do is press send. So you pay a fee of about £20, press send, and then it comes over to my side. So the student can't inter uh, change the form anymore. Now, when it comes to me, I can send it back. So if they do change their mind on something, I can send it back to them at this stage. Or if I spot that there might be an error in a part of the form, maybe they've put a, a school email instead of a personal email, then I can send it back. But once it's my side, I ask the tutors to gather material for a reference. A lot of this is already prepared. And the reference is very much subject based. So if a student is going to apply for a course on chemistry, then what UCAS now want is a very, very heavy reference geared towards chemistry. They want to know a bit about the other two subjects, but really it's the chemistry they're interested in. And they're not as interested in the school side about more of the, say, the, the narrative about the student's background and hobbies and that sort of thing. That's the personal statement's role to do that. So the, the school's reference is pretty much factual. They're always positive. They're always emphasising what the student's good at. There's no negative put points put down at all in those. And then once that's ready, then we can press send. And when it goes to UCAS, they send it to the five universities that are on that list. No university sees which other four they've gone to. And even if it's two courses within the same university, they might be different departments, then each department won't know either. So they're almost like confidential. So that's, that's one aspect to get. So the universities sit with those and they'll go through the references. And as I say, some will turn it around very, very, very quickly. And they'll be giving offers perhaps at this time of year within a week. Others will sit on them they might be November, December, it could be January, it could be into February before they send offers. There's no definitive rule for this. So it could be very quick, it could be way over the other side of Christmas. Now when those choices come in, you'll get three replies, one of three replies. It'll either be a conditional offer and they'll say, we'd love you to come on this course but we require you to get A, B, B, or three Cs, or 110 points, they might phrase it that way. And a points offer means you can build it up however you like it. Sometimes they'll say B, C, C, and we want the B in this subject, at least a B in this subject. So that's a conditional offer. Sometimes they'll put on it as well, with an EPQ, they might say ABB, but if you get an A in your EPQ, we'll drop it to ABB. So they'll take a grade off, and that's always handy. And EPQs count as points. The second offer, which is increasingly rare now, it went through a very popular burst a few years ago, and it was quite shameless really, it was the universities simply trying to fill seats as much as anything, was to offer unconditional offers. And that means we'll take you whatever you get. It doesn't matter. Get, get three E's and you're in. And um, this was a terrible thing because a lot of students who received unconditional offers then basically gave up working because they were in. Now that's fine so long as that's the only thing you ever want to do with your A-levels. And when you get on that course, it's absolutely lovely and you're, you sail through in three years. But an unconditional offer is a very dangerous thing. Now in LVS last year we saw two of those, two unconditionals. The year before there were about eight, and in previous years there had been quite a lot more than that. They were getting to be quite common, but it's, it's a practice that's frowned upon now. And then the third one, and this doesn't happen that often, it'll come back as unsuccessful. And that means 
they, they look through your application and they don't want it. Now, sometimes they will say why. And they might say, well, your predicted grades weren't good enough or we prefer a bit of experience in this. But they don't have to give a reason. And unfortunately, it's no good for phoning them up because they won't discuss it. So an unsuccessful means that's it. It's, it's, it's done. That one's over. So there's no good chasing them up on that one. So then what happens when you've got five choices, say you've got five conditional offers, you have to choose one that's firm. That's the one that you say, yeah, if I get this, I'll come to you. And you'll have one that's an insurance. Now, clearly, the insurance offer should be lower grades than the firm offer, because you, that's 99 times out of 100, the way that students decide which university they're going to with the grades. So. The, it's important that the insurance is below, and it's also important that the insurance is you know, quite significantly below, two or three grades below. There's no point in having an insurance that's simply one grade away, because universities might change their minds on the admissions day. More about that later. The firm and the insurance offer don't have to be decided until very late May, early June. So again, there's absolutely no rush there. You can take your time. And then, after they've been sent off, once you've sent, said, this is the firm, this is the insurance, the next big thing to happen is on the 14th of, June, of August this year. And 8 a.m. is the key time. So Thursday the 14th. On Monday, the universities get the results from the exam boards. They have two or three days to go through them, look at who they've offered to, and then firm them up or reject them. So if you may have just missed a conditional offer, let's say it was ABB and you got AB, ABC, they might look at you and think, do you know what, it's been a bit of a tough year, you're in. Now you won't know about that until the Thursday. Or they might say, no, nope, you missed it, so we've rejected you. Now on Thursday, if they, oh sorry, if the firm offer rejects you, they'll pass you down to the insurance and they, they can have a look and see if they'll take you. So on the morning of the 14th, just before 8 o'clock, students get an email or, or through UCAS saying, well done, fantastic, you've been accepted here. And it might be your first choice, it might be your insurance. You don't know your grades then. Then at 8 o'clock the grades come out and the grades are given through ISAMs from LVS, so eight o'clock on the dot, grades are issued. This is where it all turns a bit quick and fast, and I'll do another one of these much closer to the time, going into more detail about what to do. But simply put, it's not all over yet. Eight o'clock is the key time. If the student's been rejected by the firm and insurance, then they should be in a position at eight o'clock to phone up other universities admissions department which are heavily manned on the phones and there they can say have you got a space on this course these are my grades and it'll be a straight yes or no they don't even read the form at that time it's like a it's like a fire sale but we'll talk about that more but at this stage just to recap students have all completed the UCAS form short of putting in the five choices in the personal statement when they've done that they can send it across, we'll put the reference in, send it away, and then it's in play. And over the next few weeks, they'll be getting their offers. Now, it's a tremendously exciting time, it's a nervous time, but it's also a time to be really, really careful about the choices because these stick. And though there are other options in August, this is the time when they've got control themselves. So all the best to them and all the best to you in supporting them. And if you do have any questions, please do get in touch with me. Thank you very much. Night.